Hello and welcome to another video by Emily Learning. In this video, we'll be talking about what you need to know for the chapter on turning effects, turning effects of forces tested in O-level physics. So let's get started. Alright, so to find out what is tested in turning effects of force, it's best to look at the O-level syllabus. So here we are. Alright, so in the turning effects of forces, there are three parts, moment, center of gravity, and stability. So in part A, you're asked to describe the moment of a force in terms of its turning effect and relate this to everyday examples. So most likely for this part, they will give us an example, a question example, and you need to use moments to explain what is happening. Okay. Then in part B, you're asked to record and apply the relationship moment of a force is equal to force times perpendicular distance from the pivot okay and you are going to use it to solve questions okay so for here you need to be able to apply this formula so moment equals to force times perpendicular distance i do have a post that lists the formulas that you need to know for o level physics so you are interested to find out all the formulas you need to know or most of the formulas that you need to know for the o level physics to check out that post okay so now back to the syllabus here so this is basically applying this formula here Okay, and basically it's usually application questions. So they give you a question and ask you what is the moments or they give you a question and ask you something that needs you to find moments. Okay. Next, part C, you're asked to state the principle of moments for a body in equilibrium. So for a body um, to be in equilibrium, the sum of the clockwise moment is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moment about the same point. Okay, so this is the principle of moments. This is a definition. So uh, this is one of the definitions that you need to know for O-level physics. So if you are interested, I also have a post that lists the common um, definitions that you need to know for O-level physics. So do check it out. I will provide a link in the description below. Okay, so basically, um, know the definition of this, know this formula, and very uh, important, you need to be able to apply these. Okay? Okay, so what I meant, so for example, I have this object here. Okay, so this is the pivot. Okay, and I have a weight here. I have a force here, F, and I have another force here, another force here f2 okay so i know that this is 50 cm and i know that this is 10 newtons this is maybe 2 1 newton and here is maybe 1 100 cm okay and here to let me call this f1 then here to here is 80 cm and you are asked to find what is this equals to. All right. So what you need to do is, so you know that this um, system is at equilibrium because it is not moving. So what you need to do is to apply the principle of moments to find what is F1. So I am going to take moments about the pivot. So uh, maybe let me change the color. Okay. So taking moments about the pivot okay then i know that okay so i know that this w as well as f2 are part of the clockwise moment right and f1 is part of the anti-clockwise moment anti-clockwise moment so i know clock wise moment is equals to anti clockwise moments okay so clockwise moment is basically 10 newtons times 50 cm which is 0.5 meters plus 1 newton times 1 meter right 100 cm is 1 meter equals to f1 times 0.8 or 80 cm all right so from there i'll be able to find that f1 is equals to 6 divided by 0 0.8 then type it into your calculator you'll be able to find what is f1 
Okay, so this tells us that what we are doing here, we are taking moments about the pivot and we equate clockwise moment equals to anti-clockwise moment. What we are applying is the principle of moments. When an object is at equilibrium, sum of the clockwise moments equals to the sum of the anti-clockwise moment about the same point. Okay, then once we have formed this equation, what we need to do is we need to find the individual clockwise and anti-clockwise moment. To do so, we will make use of the formula of moments, which is force times perpendicular distance. All right. Okay. All right. So this is how you apply the principle of moments to questions. Okay. Uh, yeah. Next, let's look at E. Show understanding that weight of a body may be taken as acting on a single. Da, 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 da. So basically, what it's trying to say is that right, the center of gravity is the point where the entire weight of an object seems to be acting from. So. If I have a meter rule, where does all the weight seems to act at? It will be acting at here. Okay, and this point here where the weight seems to act at is known as the center of gravity. So what happens is if I were to put something at this point, if I were to put my finger directly below this point, the ruler will not be moving because the uh the moments of the weight and the finger will cancel off okay or you can look at it as the weight is being supported at this point so they will cancel off but if i want to support the ruler at any other point right it will move okay so basically for part e what you need to know is the center of gravity is the point in an object where the entire weight of the body seems to act and when we are drawing the uh a force diagram to show where weight is, we are always drawing at the point where the center of gravity lies. Okay, so that is for part E. For part F, you are um, asked to describe the qualitative, uh, qualitatively the effect of the position of the center of gravity on the stability of an object. Okay, so in other words, right, the lower the center of gravity, the more stable the object is. Okay, so if the CG is here, it will be more stable than when the CG is higher up. Okay. For this, it is it, it topples easily, right? Okay. So firstly, for an object to be as stable as possible, the center of gravity should be as low as possible. Secondly, in order for an object to be as stable as possible, it should be have a base that is as wide as possible. The wider the base, the less likely it will topple. So in other words, the more stable it is. Okay, so I've uh, finished this part. There's another portion that I want to go through, which is on perpendicular distance. So I need a fresh sheet. So let's take a look at what perpendicular distance is in the next slide. All right, I want to take a moment to talk about perpendicular distance. So what is perpendicular distance? Well, perpendicular distance is basically defined as the distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot. So if you look at your common example, which is this seesaw here, and this is my pivot, and this is my force here, then the perpendicular distance we know is always here, right? So if you look at this, this is the pivot. So if I were to draw, this is the pivot. And this is the force, okay? So this is a line, so I can extend the force however um, long I like. So the distance, the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the force will be the perpendicular distance, okay? What happens if I have something like this, okay? This is the weight, okay? This is the weight. And now my pivot is at this point. So where is the perpendicular distance? Remember I say it is the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the this force here. So this will be the perpendicular distance, okay? If you have this scenario. What if I have a pivot here? Okay, pivot. And my force is in this direction. Okay, well, remember, this is my pivot and this is my force, right? I'm going to draw this. What is the perpendicular distance from this point to this line? It is zero. Okay, so for this scenario here, 
the pivot and the uh sorry so in uh, this scenario here the perpendicular distance from this pivot here which i call pivot to this force here is zero so in other words right if i have a force and I have a pivot. And if I can extend the force, so if I extend this line here and it passes through the pivot, then the perpendicular distance will be zero. Okay, let me repeat it. So if I can draw the force and when I extend the force, this line here, and it will pass through the pivot, Okay, then the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the line of action of this force will be zero. Okay, so make sure you know how to find perpendicular distance. I know it's easy for examples like this because this is the most common type of questions. But when you are dealing with things that are at an angle, do know that what you need to do is to extend the force okay, and draw a perpendicular line from the pivot to this, uh, this line or this force. Okay. All right, with that, we come to the end of our quick summary on what is tested for the chapter on turning effects of forces. Okay, so to, if you are interested in other chapters, to find out what is tested in other chapters, do check out our other videos. Thank you and see you.